It's a well-known fact that dogs love holidays. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, no matter what the holiday, we say woof, bring them on. Since we're not all Cocker Spaniels with roots here in the USA, a lot of us have wonderful and interesting traditions from other parts of the world. Because no matter where you come from, chances are hollow days include lots of food and plenty of human destruction. That means we dogs can get away with loads of stuff during the hollow days. We can jump on the bed, grab drums, a drumstick or two off the counter and sneak out the door. And with all that family around during the hollow days, we usually end up with a good belly rub no matter what. Uh, the holidays, it's a fine time of year. So throw a log under the fire, curl up under a tree, light a candle, and get ready to celebrate with the dogs. I'm a German Shepherd from Germany. There's a legend in Germany, where I'm from, that says animals speak to one another on Christmas Eve. The legends also say they're... Trees fill with fruit, mounds open up and are filled with gems and church bells. You can hear all the bottom of the ocean. I don't know if all of this is true, but I do talk to other animals on Christmas Eve. I have what? and lots of holiday memories because in Germany they start celebrating early on December 6th. On the night of December 6th, the kids used to leave a shoe or boot for St. Nicholas to fill with candy or twigs, depending on whether they've been good or bad. The hardest part for me was not chewing on the boots and shoes. Of course, I also remember the beautiful Christmas trees that would appear on Christmas Eve. The idea of Christmas trees as we think of them now started in Germany. There would not be trees. Then suddenly a bell would ring a ring and we'd run into the front room and there it was a tree. It was usually covered with apples, candies, candy, nuts, toys, Tinsels and lights. There will also be plates of food, nuts, and chocolate. It was paradise except for the chocolate which dogs can't eat. What dog wants to have a holiday like that? You know the old saying, it's better to give than to receive. Well, we believe that absolutely so. Here are a few ideas for some Paul made gifts. In fact, some gifts don't even need to be made. They just need to be found. The stick, for example, is the finest gift a dog can get. Another good gift for the holidays is a rope ball. You can make one out of a thick cotton rope. Just tie a knot in it. We love playing tug-of-war. We also love feasting on how. Holiday's favorites such as gingerbread cakes, Irish soda, bread, and doggy Christmas cookies. I'm a Shih Tzu from China. A few of my relatives have memories of Christmas in China. My great-grandfather used to talk about paper lanterns and trees of light-colored paper and chains and flowers. He would tell me stories about waiting for Dun Chi Lu Ren, Father Christmas, on Christmas Eve. But what most of us with Chinese roots will always remember is the Chinese New Year. When I was a pup, I used to spend the day under the bed because firecrackers were going off everywhere. But to celebrate the honor of the six Jews who have be be come before me, I couldn't wait for the celebration. It doesn't matter where on earth you celebrate the holidays. There's one thing everyone has in common. There are certain times of the year when everyone seems to think about helping others. Of course, there are ways to reach out to others all year long, but it seems like the holidays really get folks thinking. Some dogs that are helpful are rescue dogs, guide dogs, 
search and recovery dogs and sled dogs. I'm a Shetland Sheepdog from Scotland. Being a Shetland Sheepdog, I think Foundland of all Scotland during the holidays. Christmas is a rather quiet holiday back home, but I always think about Scotland at New Year's Day, or as we like to call it, Hogmanay. That word comes from a very tasty oat cake that all the children eat on New Year's Eve, unless, of course, they have a clever dog nearby who gets it first. I remember one year I was the first to set foot in our neighbor's house. They made such a fuss because of a tradition called first footing. You see folks in Scott. Scotland, we believe that in the first to enter a home in, new, in the new year affects what kind of luck the people who live in the home will have the coming year. Strangers bring the best luck. Some believe a dark-haired stranger brings them better luck than a fair-haired stranger. Personally, I think a Shetland sheepdog standing in your doorway at midnight on New Year's Eve is just about the luckiest thing in the world. Don't forget, no matter what the holiday, your dog can stay safe and healthy. So keep in mind these holidays, rules, and thumbs. Even though your holiday schedule can be crazy, don't forget that your dog needs exercise. Don't for don't forget to include your dog in holiday photos. A playful dog is a happy dog. So if you're in the gift giving mood, get your best friend something that encourages like play like a ball, a frisbee, or something to chew. Poinsettias are beautiful decorations for the house, but they can be poisonous for us dogs to eat, so keep them away. Just because we like food doesn't mean we should eat every, every holiday treat in the house. Keep us on a regular diet and definitely no chocolate. Coach Jules from Switzerland and the Bernie's Mountain Dog. Christmas back home in Switzerland is a lot like Christmas in the United States. I remember all the December days crazy with, de with decorating and shopping and baking. Yum! Christmas cookies are some of my happiest memories. I love eating butter cookies, cinnamon stars, and jam cookies. Of course, it was always fun to be in on the secret day of decorating the tree so that the children could be surprised by Chris Kind on Christmas Eve. Santa Claus doesn't deliver the gifts in Switzerland. Chris Kind does, just like in Germany. Christmas is fun in Switzerland. And in some parts of Switzerland, that doesn't happen until January 1st or January 6th. Here's some tasty trivia for the season. The traditional Ukrainian Christmas is 12 courses. The youngest child in the family watches for the evening star to appear because then the feast can begin. A long time ago in England, the tra traditional Christmas dinner was a head of a pig prepared with mustard. According to a survey, 7 out of 10 British dogs get Christmas gifts from their owners. Candy cane started as straight white sticks of sugar candy. A choir master had them bent to look like a shepherd's crook and gave them to children to keep them quiet during church. They became red striped in the 1900s. Feliz Navidad from Chihuahua in Mexico. 
Every Chihuahua knows that La Posada means Christmas. The holiday begins every year on December 16th and lasts for nine days. Friends and families reenact the story of Mary and Joseph. Every night after dark, groups of family and friends playing the ro their roles move from house to house. Go. Each night, they are turned away from houses. Finally, on the last night, Mary and Joseph are invited in, and a great celebration begins. And that means one thing, Pinata. Of course, as a Chihuahua, I have always been too small to have any chance at breaking open the Pinata. Being so close to the ground comes in handy once the Pinata is broken. There was candy and toys for everyone. It's not hard to know when midnight arrives on Christmas Eve in Mexico because fireworks explode everywhere. Bells ring and whistles blow too. Many people attend church and then everyone sits down to a big traditional Mexican dinner. Woof. By the time Christmas Day actually arrives, things are pretty quiet. Christmas is celebrated in a lot of different places. And since dogs are from all over the world, we would know. In England, dogs such as the Bull Terrier, Beagle, Jack Russell Terrier, and Collie call him Father Christmas. In France, the Papillion and French Bulldog call him Pierre Noel. The Poodle, German Shepherd, Dash Hound, and Rottweil are German dogs and call him Chris Tyne. In Holland, he is St. Nicholas to the Dutch Shepherd. The Italian Greyhound, Maltese, and Spinol call him La Bifana in Ilti. In Russia, he is known as Babushka to the Serbian Husky, Karen Bay Dog, the Black Russian Terror, and the Russian World Hound. In Scandinavia, different Christmas gnomes bring the presents. Merry Christmas, but most of all, Happy New Year from the IKEA in Japan. The most important thing I can tell you about Christmas in Japan is that the Hotishia, our Santa Claus, has eyes in the back of his head. That means he can see, he can really see you while, while you're sleeping and doing everything else, too. Japanese people love to exchange gifts, so the idea caught on quickly. You could be sure you'll have some turkey on Christmas Day in Japan and probably see everything the mistletoe too. What I remember most, though, is the New Year. You've never seen a clean house until you spend a New Year's Eve in Japan. It's tough to be a shedding dog at this time of the year. After the cleaning comes the decorating. Then all the people get dressed up and the father leads the family through the house. The father also throws dried beans in the corner of the house to push out bad luck and welcome in the good. The Pomeranian gets a visit from the Yuletide lads in Iceland. When you come from a place that is dark both day and night during the winter where snow stretches as far as you can see and the northern light stands across the sky, well, it's not hard to believe that a man dressed in red can fly across the sky pulled by reindeer. In fact, I used to see reindeer all the time back home in Iceland. I never saw the flying kind, but they're very good at getting around on the ground, too. But the real fun started on the 12th of December. That's when the Yuletide lads would visit all the good bo little boys and girls and small puppy dogs and leave small gifts for them. For the 12 nights leading up to Christmas, we would get little gifts. Then the Yotai lads would return to the mountains according to the stories that that is where they would spend the rest of the year. The Dalmatians from Yugoslavia. 
It's true I've spent a lot of great holidays at the firehouse, but if I think way, way back, I can remember staying up all night on Christmas Eve with the humans to make sure the fire locks didn't go out. That would have been very bad luck. That was how it was back in Yugoslavia. The person who got the piece of cake with the coin in it would have good luck all year long. I can also remember the children hoping they would get the golden coin that had been baked into a Christmas cake. <laughs> that was how it was back in Yugoslavia. The person who got the piece of cake with the coin in it would have good luck all year long. But the most fun we had was on the two Sundays before Christmas. First, we would celebrate Mother's Day by playing tricks on our mom. Then the next Sunday, we do the same thing to our dad on Father's Day. In Russia, the Husky celebrates Christmas, Malanka, and New Year's. Here's how much we like St. Nicholas in Russia. Many Eastern Orthodox churches have been named after him, and Nicholas is one of the most popular boy names for Russian boys. Even I remember getting really hungry on Christmas Eve because of all my people fasted that day, and so after the church service on Christmas Eve. Then with the after that, he didn't have any meat in it. And they didn't seem to mind. In fact, they seemed to, to, to be having a party. They were all eating out of the same bowl. Something called katya. This is a porridge made with wheat berries, honey, and poppy seeds. It symbolizes hope, happiness, success, and untroubled rest. As a dog, I'd much rather eat meat. Some of my friends' families save their celebrations for January 7th. In the old days, some celebrate on St. Nicholas Day, but no matter when it happens, children get gifts and people celebrate. As for Alanka, that's a party. We used to get dressed up and go to the big ba to big banquets and balls. Malaka is a is all about being merry, as in merry Malaka. Of course, there are many holidays in the Canon calendar. On January first, we celebrate New Year's Day. Ask your dog to make a resolution. On Martin Luther King Day, the third Monday in January, celebrate the equality of all people and dogs. February 2nd is Groundhog's Day. Free your inner terrier and chase a small furry creature into the ground. Don't forget to hug your dog on Valentine's Day. President's Day is the third Monday in February. So, fun, so spend the day looking at pictures of pets that have lived in the White House. Let your dog eat green things on March 17th for St. Patrick's Day. Here's a good prank for April Fool's Day. Tell your brother or sister that your dog ran away. When she or he goes, to, goes out to look for him, get the ice cream and split it with your dog. We love to hunt eggs on Easter. Earth Day is April 22nd. So let your dog dig as much as possible. Then plant something in the hole. On Mother's Day, get a puppy for your mom. On Father's Day, get another puppy, this time for your dad. Dogs usually don't like fireworks. So hold your dog's paw during those 4th of July fireworks. For Columbus Day, take your dog for a walk to discover a new land. Halloween is October 31st. Act frightened when your dog dresses up as a cat. Vote for your dog on Election Day. Set a place for your dog on Thanksgiving. For Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa, include your dog in any activity that includes presents. Ah, the holidays. Find that holiday spirit and have a happy holiday. <laughs>